Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss about uh, new stuff in Python which is requirements.txt. So this is one of the most important, I would not say that, but one of the important stuff that you should consider before you actually start working on a project. So let's get started. Um, so what is a requirements.txt file? A requirements.txt is a text file used in Python for listing the dependencies needed for a Python project. So in simple words, it's just a simple text file that you could write into your project uh, folder and it holds the list of all the dependencies that you have for your particular project. Moving on to the next point, this is a particular format which should be followed. So each requirements.txt file should follow a particular format uh, in order for the for the whole project to work properly. So the format followed is package name e double equal to and then the version number of the package being used. Uh, in a short while I'll show you an actual requirements.txt file in my system but for now we'll just move on to the next point. So the next point is the file should be updated whenever a new dependency is installed for the project. So suppose you have added five dependencies for your project today and you add a new dependency tomorrow then it doesn't mean that you just add it straight straight away uh, instead you just have to update the requirements.txt file as well. Uh, so I hope that's clear but yeah we will definitely look into this in, in a moment. Uh, moving on to the next point which is the file should be part of the code base and should be checked into your source code management tool for example kit. So this is pretty much clear to those people who already use some source code management tool and I hope all of you do that. But in case you do not use it, I strongly recommend to use a source code management tool, for example, GitLab or GitHub. But yes, definitely you should uh, use it. Um, yeah, so the point is that whenever you create a new requirements.txt file, it should be checked into the source code management. So I'll move on to the next slide, which is how to use a requirements.txt file. Okay, so we have some points out here. The first one is create a requirements.txt file at the root level of the project, which means that whenever you start with the project, uh, the best approach is to create the file, the requirements file on the top level, that is the immediate uh, root folder of the project. So I'll, in, a, in a while I'll show you how it looks like, but I think it's pretty much straightforward. So the next point is ensure that the dependencies are listed in the desired format. So it's exactly what we discussed earlier that there is a specific format for each dependency and you should list all those dependencies in the requirements text file in that format only. Okay, so the next point is ensure that all the dependencies are listed. Okay, so this point is really important because if you are starting a project, then it's really important that you have all those dependencies listed in your requirements file. So if, if you forget one of those dependencies, then your project might work in your system. But if you want to move or copy your project to another system or another server, and when you try to install all the dependencies, then the project might fail because of the missing dependency. I hope you're getting my point here. And the next point here is execute the command pip install minus r requirements.txt. So this is the command that we use to install all the dependencies that are listed in the requirements file. Uh, and we are going to see this right away. So here you can see that um, in my current system, I just ran the pip list command, which shows me the list of all the dependencies which are already there in my current virtual environment. So if you are not aware of what a virtual environment is, then you, you might want to check my previous video on how to create a virtual environment and what are the benefits of it. Okay, so moving on to the next step. So you can already see the list of uh, dependencies that are already installed in my virtual environment using the pip list command. And now uh, I would like to install uh, some of the dependencies which are already specified in my requirements.txt file. So the command is pip install hyphen r and followed by the requirements.txt. So before we execute this command, I will just go to my folder here. So this is my project folder, which is Django. And inside that I have the virtual environment created, which is the env folder. And I also have a simple requirements.txt file. 
So if I just open this requirements file, you can see that there is a list of dependencies that I want to install and it also follows the specific format that we just discussed which is the dependency name followed by the double equal sign then followed by the version number so now we will see what happens when we run the command which is pip install minus r requirements.txt and if i run this command my system starts downloading all the dependencies which are mentioned in the requirements text file and it gets installed automatically so you can see the last line here which says successfully installed all these packages which were mentioned in the requirements file right now i'll just clear the screen and maybe just do a pip list to see whether the requirements were actually installed and yes you can see that the list now contains a lot more stuff than what was there already and these are the packages which i actually specified in my requirements file okay but you can also see that there are more which means that these packages further have their own dependencies and my system has already installed all the dependencies uh, required to run my project successfully okay then we move on to the next slide or uh, the last point here which we just uh, missed here which is the check the install dependencies using the pip list command which we have already just did now right we have seen all the dependencies which are installed using the pip install command and then we ran the pip list uh, which lists all the dependencies which were installed for this particular project okay so then we move on to the next slide which is what are the benefits of using a requirements text file so the most important benefit which I find is it's easy to store a list of dependencies used in your Python project. So if you do not use a requirements text file, then I don't see a way to, you know, uh, save the list of dependencies that you need for running your own project. Um, so before, so if you're just running a project and you do not use this requirements file, then how would you manage it? I mean, you never know what all dependencies are there. You have to always run this uh, pip list and then see which all dependencies you have. And it's, it's really a mess, right? So I think this is a really important feature uh, that you can have a list of dependencies that you require for running a particular project in your system or in any other server. So the second most important feature is that install the same set of dependencies on a new server. So this is really important. So suppose a project runs in your machine and then you want to you know, copy the same project to another machine or a server. How do you do that? You have to understand what all dependencies are required to run this project and then it's really difficult if you do not maintain those lists in a requirements file but if you have the requirements file maintained properly you could just run the pip install minus r requirements.txt command in your new server and all the dependencies will get automatically installed to that server that's a great feature that you could have and the third point is it maintains the records of the version of dependencies being used in a project so as we saw each so if you look at the requirements sample file here we have the dependency name here and the version number so by just looking into this requirements file you can already understand that these are the dependencies we need and these are the version of these dependencies that we need to install or already installed in this particular virtual environment right so that's one of the cool feature that we get and the last slide here shows me the additional information that's great to know and which says that you could export the list of installed dependencies by running this command which is pip freeze uh, arrow followed by the requirements.txt file name okay so we could just do it on my system and see what happens so here i will do the pip freeze followed by the arrow and then the requirements i'll do a requirements 3.txt maybe because i already have the requirements.txt file in the same folder and i do not want to override it so when i run this command what it does is it uh, it copies this list of all the requirements uh, this list of all the dependencies which are installed in my 
current virtual environment and it saves it to a file uh, mentioned here. So if I just execute this command, this is executed successfully and now I can go to my folder here and I can see that there is a new file created here with the name which I provided. And if I open it, you could see that it has a list of all the dependencies which were installed for this particular virtual environment. Cool, that's a great feature. And then if I move to the last slide, that's all for today. So thank you for watching my video and I hope I made you understand how the requirements.txt file works and what are the advantages of using it. And I hope that you start using this file now on in all your Python projects. And do let me know if that really helps in the comment section below. And you can also let me know if there is any feedback or if I missed something. I'm always ready to answer your comments and questions. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon. Bye. Take care.